Good evening and welcome inside West Edmonton Mall and now the victorious Manitoba Junior Ice. Very well, happy to welcome in Cooper Bell. Cooper, let's talk about the game that just took place over Montreal. How was it finishing off the tournament like that in an overtime thrilling victory? It was good, it felt good to win. Me and the boys, we had a good selly after. It just felt good to really get that last one in. And how, how great has it been taking part in this tournament, playing against all these kids from across North America pretty much, and really just showing what you guys have on the Manitoba ice? It's felt really good because like the crowd, it's so energizing and you just get a lot of energy from them. Okay, how about your goal in that game? Walk us through the play. What did you see and how did it feel? So I saw the puck down, down on the ice. I chipped it over the kid. My teammate, he's like, I got it. So I told him I'll be to the net. He just gave me a nice little dish and I tapped it in. And then how about the celebration with all the fans when OJ scores oh, the overtime yeah. winner? That was that was a big one because we really wanted to win that last one. Yeah, nice to end on a positive yeah. note like that. Well, you know what? Thanks for obviously taking part in the tournament. A great way to finish that off in a 5-4 victory and uh, wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Cooper Belt. As we're getting set between the Toronto Bulldogs and Brick Alberta, it's teams in fourth and fifth place of the tournament. My name's Rory McGorn as we welcome in color commentator Tarsi Young. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> We make it work either way. As we got a great matchup here between Toronto Bulldogs and Team Brick Alberta. Currently Toronto with a three and one record. That loss coming in overtime. So they have 10 points. However, if they pick up a regulation victory, it's gonna leapfrog them right back into first place. And that's huge getting that by. It is, you're gonna see it from these kids. You can tell as they came out, just how big of, a, of an entrance they came. They've got the energy. They are here to get back into first place. I don't know if you noticed, Rory, I've been here three days. If you look around, there is a lot of Toronto Bulldogs banners up here. I think they want to continue that tradition. There is a lot of Toronto Bulldogs banner, but they are going up against, of course, the host team, who are going to have a lot of support here at West Edmonton Mall. Always, yeah. Team Brick Alberta, the loud crowd here yesterday, and that will continue on, I'm sure. But Bulldogs bring their own cheering section as well with noisemakers, so I guess we'll see how it all turns out. And you mentioned you were here since the start of the tournament. What have you seen from Toronto? What have you seen from the Brick you that they're going to go up against each other tonight? The Brick is the one team I've seen. I never got a chance to see Chicago, or Toronto at all. Sorry, now I'm getting mixed up. We got Chicago, we got Minnesota. So many teams. Yeah. I mean, this is like my ninth game thus far. 
Um, honestly, the energy that they bring is really what it is. Uh, Team Brick Alberta is all about speed and finesse from what we saw. Plus, the kids are big, too. You can't take that away from them. These are 10 and 11-year-olds. But what I always like to talk about, Rory, is the sportsmanship that we see from these teams. No matter what the competition, they're out there shaking hands. A lot of times, they're exchanging gifts before games as well. They know that there's something on the line. This is the biggest tournament they're going to play in at this age. It's the only tournament at this age, really, of this size. So they're just excited to be here. It's great to watch. And that was right into my next question. Talk about the tournament, the Brick Invitational, and how special it is for all these kids to come in and play in it. I've never got to witness it myself. And just seeing all the fans, when you watch Manitoba score the goal, the whole skate around the rink with the high fives, it's yeah. just an unbelievable atmosphere here. Very much so. I mean, parents, family, friends, they get to come inside, which is rare. Usually when your hometown rinks, there's 10 feet of glass. So you don't get a chance to touch the players and that kind of thing. This kind of gives them that connection. Yeah. The weird part is being inside a mall. Yesterday, I got a sunburn <laughs> sitting here doing play-by-play -play for the games that I was here. So if you notice that, that might be exactly why. But <laughs> I mean, and there's people just walking by doing their shopping, the tourists. It's a long weekend, right? But uh, they like to stop and watch. It just kind of adds to the atmosphere. It's fantastic to be here at the Ice Palace. We mentioned the Toronto Bulldogs with the win. They'll leapfrog into first place. Team Brick Alberta's only one point behind Toronto. They're three and one with nine points. Their loss coming in regulation. There's a lot on the line. Yeah. This is going to be a very good game to watch. I mean, we've seen some serious high skilled stuff out of these youngsters, 10 and 11 years old again. But I mean, they walk past that wall of fame downstairs before each and every game with names of players that have played here, NHL players, major junior players, college players, yeah, Olympic gold medalists, right? There is a lot that these, we're watching the future of hockey and they're here playing for the love of it and they're happy to be here and it shows. And I mean, even at this age, 2011 birth year, what we're watching now, in a few days, you'll see the 2012 birth year. But the commitment level that the kids put into their game already at this age is unparalleled. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously you got to give props to the parents who are getting Absolutely. up at 5 o'clock to yeah. take them to the rink for practice. When they can get their ice time, they're going to take it. But yeah, you just see it, the, the power skating, the, the stick handling clinics, you can see that they've all taken part in these over the last number of years. Well, player to watch, I guess, we'll, we'll start with the Toronto Bulldogs. You got to go with Cohen Hutchinson, four points, a point per game pace. And then, of course, the goaltender in uh, Lincoln Heath. We'll find out your starting at goaltenders, if it will be Heath or if it will be Blake Farrell. But Lincoln Heath, a 9.33 save percentage as well, been spectacular for Toronto. It's been fantastic. I mean, these kids, again, you don't expect it out of them at this age. But they're out here showing us that they've got what it takes, and it's amazing to watch. Well, Grayson Scriba as well, the goaltender who uh, started one game, he also pitched a shutout, 13 saves on 13 shots. So we'll see if it's going to be Bruinsma or Scriba in net for the Brick Alberta. But one of the leading scorers of the tournament is Brody Antigiani, and he's got five points in four games. Antigiani, yeah, he's been fun to watch as well. Here come the national anthems. Down to ice level for O Canada. And here's the gift exchange that I talked about earlier. Yeah, awesome moment of gratitude between the two teams before they set off. The scene is set as it is to our broadcast left. The Toronto Bulldogs are broadcast right. It's the host team in Brick, Alberta. Honestly, I love the fact that the Bulldogs bring out a mascot. He Beautiful. comes out to hype people up. His name is Champ. I met him downstairs. He's a good dog. <laughs> We now are going to get a look at your starting netminders. Once they send them out, it's funny. Like usually when you uh, 
a little bit higher levels of hockey, you can pretty much count on who's going to be starting in goal every single time. But out here, it's been up and down and, and switching around almost every game, which is good. Everybody gets a chance to play that way. Well, I saw Pat on the head, and looks like heading towards the net is going to be Blake Farrell. Unless he's just doing some yard keeping behind the net. Oh, yeah, he's picking up a mini stick that didn't make it into the crowd. <laughs> Not the greatest toss by the Bulldog champ to get it out into the uh, crowd. But as, <laughs> as you mentioned, I mean, we see the, the fan base of Toronto Bulldogs here. It's, it's just awesome for these kids to see the turnout from all across, wherever they're from, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Boston, Detroit. And their fan base come out in droves. Of course, Team Brick Alberta, their support group, down to our broadcast right. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, the number of people that are coming here for this tournament, based on the travel challenges that are uh, facing so many people these days, uh, and they all made it. Heck, I was chatting with the Minnesota coach. His luggage never made it. He got canceled, had to rent a car and drive up from Calgary. All kinds of crazy things like that, but they're all here. <laughs> Well, we did get a look now at the starting netminder for Team Brick Alberta, and it's going to be Baron Bruinsma. All right, number 32, a one and one record. He's played 117 minutes with a 233 goals against average and a 774 save percentage. On the other side, Lincoln Heath, 933 save percentage and a one goals against average. He's faced 15 shots in this tournament. And we'll see. It's been a goaltender's battle sometimes, and then all of a sudden the team will open it up once they get the uh, opposing goaltender rattled. It's funny how that's been working throughout the tournament so far. As quickly, it was Jet Evans driving the puck in for Brick Alberta. Turn right back around. And offside on the far side is Andrew Barinov tried to bring that one in, and we'll get our first stop to play 16 seconds in. Once again, just looking down to Alberta, you can see people actually gathering around the gallery upstairs as the crowd notices, hey, the home team's playing. Face off one back by Toronto. Zetas, D to D, moves it along. Chipped in by Toronto, around the net. Now a Bruinsma. Scooped up by the defenseman, trying to navigate it along the near side board. Zetas drives it back down low. There's Barinov, gets a little bit tripped up, no call. Hemmed up inside the near boards at the point. Long wrist shot by Zetas. That one right through a screen and then hit the defenseman, Manning the front and Manning Deneau for Team Brick. Back comes Alberta. Long shot trickles towards the near side of the net. Zetas will gobble it up off the iron. Spins off the forecheck. Now more pressure coming from Alberta. As this one sent back up, poked down by Rocco Vlasovic. Inside the corner. Challenger got the stick underneath the legs of one of the forwards for Brick Alberta. As he shifts back up into the corner, trying to get Challenger off his back. Finally, Challenger now steals the puck away. Cross ice pass on to Tyler Longo. He'll hit center ice and send it in. Minute 20 gone here in the opening period between the fourth place team and the fifth place team. But technically, both these teams can get in to where they get a bye in the first game set tomorrow. As flying through neutral ice is Bodker. Bodker puts on the brakes on the near side. Watched by Kopech. Back in front, trying to get it out. It hit a leg and peed in the process. Back up to the point. Rolling puck slapped towards the net. There of Heath never made its way towards the goaltender for Toronto. He's back out to center ice. Sent in by Longo. Quickly played back out by Alberta. In behind the net of Bruinsma. Turned it around. Toronto's making a line change. Will be scooped up off the bench. Looking to get onto the puck. It was on Garo. A little cycle action back up towards the point. Long wrist shot. Battle in front and unable to get that one towards the net of Bruinsma as it's in back into the corner. In around the net. Back on it. The Stongway. He'll fire it up towards the wall. And Alberta will force Toronto to check up. Steering it just out to center right. As far as it gets, it's whipped right back in. Hard off the back wall. Full sail line change now for some fuel for Toronto Bulldogs. 9.20 left here in a scoreless first period between Toronto Bulldogs and Brick Alberta as Andre, a battle ensues, three for each team. Andre will get to it, chip it out to center ice. On now for Lindbergh. Lindbergh, D to D, quickly played up. Onto the stick of Forstall. Driving down low. Turned around, Zetas, D to D. In towards the corner. 
And now played back out for Toronto. And this one scooped up by Cohen Hutchinson. He'll go across to Barinov. Barinov wrist shot pad saved by Bruinsma. Another one by Barinov trying to drive it back towards the front of the net. And this one slips past the stick of Barinov and sent back out to center. Zetas, D to D. Played it back up. Quickly taken off the puck. Back the other way comes Alberta, down the right wing. Trying to shovel a backhand in front was Butterwick. This one lays onto the stick. Now around the net is Evans. Evans taking a look. Up top, Bodker walks the line, shoots. This one blocked in front, another chance. At the side of the net is Butterwick. And gets slipped down, loose puck back around the net. Played it up top. And now Barinov will lead it up ice. Challenger drives it down low around Bodker. Two bodies come together, one in Lazovic, the other challenger for the Bulldogs. Wang at the point. Nice job to hold the puck in. Down, back around the wall. Played all the way out by Bodker, the mobile defenseman. What a move around the D, and that puck just slipped a little bit too far ahead of him. How about that move by Bodker? <laughs> that was fantastic. You'll watch, you'll see some of the stick handling that these kids can do will impress you every now and then. How about the pace of play as well? We played about five minutes, and I think we've only had one whistle for an offside. And one shot on goal. Yeah. <laughs> back and forth action is in towards the corner wall. Scrum ensues, played back around the net. Looking to get after it was Chudik. This one slips off his stick and sent back out to center ice by Toronto. Here's Bodker, logged a lot of minutes on the five. Seems like number 20 is constantly on the ice here for Brick Alberta, but no surprise if you saw his hands there dancing around the defenseman on his last engagement inside the attacking zone. Out in front, slips towards Wang at the point. He takes a look, that one blocked in front. Back around the net. Barinov, I believe, trying to flip it out in front to his teammate, hit a body. Wang, another great job at the blue line, holding the puck in. It's going to set up a play in front, and then unable to connect in front of the net was the Bulldogs. Back out for Antigiani. He's got two goals and three assists so far in the tournament. He'll slip it around the defenseman, and Jack Wu, who takes it away from Antigiani, fires it into an open corner. Now Wang, Wang into the corner, D to D. There's Wu. Back up towards the half wall. Stolen by Alberta. Lindbergh takes a look. That one blocked. Out towards the blue line. Stripped off the puck by Evans. Great play. He's going to send Antti Gianni down the wall. Watched by Wang. Up towards the point. Lindbergh. Great job holding the puck in. One more chance. to know after a bouncing puck. Hits the leg of Antti Gianni. Falls right onto the Toronto Bulldog stick. And now they'll lead the charge back the other way. On it is on Garo. 5.55 left here in the first period. A scoreless first period. And on it is Zetas. Across D to D. There's Dimitropoulos. Up towards center ice. Hit a leg. That's O'Gorman. The defenseman there for Brick Alberta. One of the brick forwards got a little impeded with. Play continues. Zetas back across. Dimitropoulos broken up. Back comes Team Alberta. Bouncing play in towards the high slot. Dano is going to peel it away, send it down low. Zetas after it, chasing after him is Castongue. Puck flips up into the air. Barinov trying to locate it. Can't. Instead, it's found by Forstall. Forstall into the corner, back up top. O'Gorman, great job to knock down that puck that was at hip level. Chance there for Van Ways. He'll send it back in. Alberta going to try to get a line change in here with pressure inside the zone. And Toronto will capitalize on it. They'll get into center ice. It's right back onto the stick of Alberta. He was pivoting in his own zone was O'Gorman. Quick play, backhand. Croft all the way down. Poked back in by Jollies. He's watched by Zetas, stripped off the puck. Another scrum ensues now. As it's Ethan Andre. Couple bodies now for each team. A little bit of pushing and shoving going on. It'll be peeled away. There's Wyatt Jollies twisting around up top. O'Gorman will shovel it along the boards. Back behind the net. Scooped up now by Van Wise, trying to look for a target. Flips it back to the point. That one broken up. Onto the stick of Cohen Hutchinson. He'll go to Barinov. Barinov watched out at center ice by Cole Chudik. Barinov now looking across for Hutchinson. That one broken up. Guess who? It's Bodker. Back for Wang. Up top, Barinov. Wang forced back into his own zone. We'll go D to D. 
Just steered off the puck at center ice. Nice little move there to create some separation. In comes Tyler Longo, the wrist shot blocker saved by Bruins, but rebound chance, they score! It's Jasper Wang, or pardon me, Jaden Challenger. 3.45 left in the first period, and the Bulldogs have a one nothing lead. It's funny, Bruinsma thought he was pretty much safe uh, with that initial shot, used the blocker, but the rebound came straight out and uh, Toronto able to jump on it and take that one nothing lead. It's been, you talked about it, the pace of play back and forth. It almost felt like nobody wanted to make a mistake. And uh, here you are. Now they gotta dig themselves out of a hole, does Alberta. Well, Jaden Challenger is going to pick up his second goal of the tournament. He's got four points now in five games. It has been a key contributor for the Bulldogs throughout the whole early, throughout the tournament, pardon me. It's funny, you'll see a lot of these kids. I think with so much on the line, you'll see best players on the teams out here a lot here uh, in this game. Another chance there was George Zetas, but he got his shot blocked out in front. Now crowds wanting to call, don't think they're getting one. No arms up for the referee. As well remain five on five. One nothing the score for the Toronto Bulldogs as Jaden Challenger gets his second goal of the tournament. Back comes the Brick Alberta. Jet Evans one on four. Finds some separation and a wrist shot off the shin pad of Wang in towards the half wall. Another bit of a collision as a couple bodies slip down three into the pile now. It'll allow an odd man opportunity to the point. Tipped in front and unable to navigate towards the net was Kestongwe. Back comes Toronto. Max Kopek, Kopek down the right wing. His teammates making a line change. Is the only Toronto Bulldog in the zone right now, still with possession. How about the work from Kopek? Gets it up top for Wu, across. Zetas fires towards the net, blocked in front. Great job in front, I believe that was Bodker, the defenseman, jumping up and blocking it. Pardon me, it was Madden to know with the block on Zetas all the way down the ice, and now we will have an icy one nothing for the Toronto Bulldogs, 2.28 left in the first period. As soon as uh, Alberta found themselves down a goal, you saw a little bit more jump in their step too as they came down and applied some pressure on the other end. They do not want to fall two, three goals behind with the two goaltenders we've mentioned already today. How about Max Kopech there, one on five. What a work. Team and just worked his <laughs> way into the corner. Just, yeah, you guys go change. I got this down here in the corner. We're good. Face off towards the blocker hand side of Bruinsma. It'll be won by Alberta and they'll steer it quickly out of the zone. On to Cole Chudik. Chudik now wide, a rolling puck, trying to settle it down into the corner with Zetas. We said his name a lot too, logging a lot of minutes. Big number 88 on the blue line for the Bulldogs. Peeling it off the wall. Chudik now trying to twist and turn. Wyatt Jollies around the net. Man in front, pass coming, trying to get it to Chudik. Broken up, back towards the half wall. This one stolen off the body by Jollies. He'll follow it up and fire a shot, he scores! <laughs> Wyatt Jollies with a laser wrist shot up above the glove of Lincoln Heath and we get a tie game, it's 1-1. Honestly, Jollies is a name we said a lot yesterday as well, Rory, and I'm not surprised that he's the guy that did the work, took the puck away, threw it on net, and you know, you gotta, you gotta do that sometimes, hopefully hoping good things happen. Good things just happened for Team Break Alberta. Wyatt Jollies with his second goal of the tournament, and it's a big one, as we got under two minutes left in the first period, and it's a high game. To no one's surprise how tightly contested these two teams are in the standings. We expect that to go throughout three periods of play here. Lying down the left wing was Butterwick. Puck shifted off away from him. Marinov, now it's center ice. He'll be taken off the puck. Van Wise loses it. Lindbergh will pick it up for his teammate. Go across to his defensive partner. All the way down the ice. Icing can be waved off as the Bulldogs had a chance to play it. Now Wang around the net. Quickly with some speed. Picking up plenty of it now as he drives himself outside the zone. Then lost position of the puck. Off to Stonway. On it is Dimitropoulos. They gave, they gave an assist to Antignani there, uh, Rory, just so you're aware. There you go. One of the players to watch prior to the game. That makes it six points for Antigiani. Two goals and four assists off the near side glass all the way down. That should be icing now, and it is against Alberta. Well, we're already, already down to the last minute of play in this period. This uh, just goes to show, I think this is our third, fourth, I'm not counting the goals, <laughs> third or fourth whistle the entire time. It's just been back and forth. So good to watch so far. Yeah, there hasn't been, I think we had three whistles throughout the whole game. Defenseman jumping up into the rush routinely, and it's a great pace between the Bulldogs 
And Brick Alberta, a chance at the side of the net and quick putting the glove down strong was Baron Bruins, but make sure that one didn't get free at the side of the net was Max Kopech. Bruins is going to play it safe now, especially after that one rebound is what turned on into the one Toronto goal. 52 seconds left in the first period. Puck's dropped. Trying to get in after its challenger. A rolling puck. Going to jump into it was Wu. Just rolls it into the corner. Now forced all. All the way down the ice. No icing, says the referee. Is back behind the net of Lincoln Heath. Only the second goal of the tournament that Lincoln Heath is allowed. Here comes two on two, back the other way. Shot paddled into the corner by Bruinsma. Picked up into the half wall. Down low, Kopech rolls it around the boards. Wu's going to hold it in again. Penalty coming up now to, I believe, the Brick Alberta. No, is it, is it going towards the Toronto. Toronto Bulldogs? Yes, it is. Toronto's going to get the penalty as Evans... Works it in, and then Zetas will touch the puck. So nine seconds left, and a chance for the Brick to grab their first lead of the game as they'll get an offensive zone draw and their first power play. It's a high stick being called on what looks like Challenger as he moves slowly <laughs> towards the penalty box. They're quite strict on contact and, and sticks out here, Rory, yeah. which is, I mean, good. At this age, they're you, this is a non-contact rink. You don't need, any, need anybody getting a shoulder knocked out of place by 18 inch wide boards yeah no, absolutely and you mentioned it it's Jaden challenger to the box he's got a goal he's got a penalty <laughs> is that assist away from a an 11 year old gordy howe hat trick i guess yeah, yeah. yeah. i was gonna say what's the gordy howe hat trick yeah. at this age when you can't really fight each other i uh, will give it to him he picked up an assist we'll, we'll, we'll credit it for that end of the first period 12 minutes gone and it's a 1-1 score as Challenger opened it for the Toronto Bulldogs. And then how about the wrist shot by Wyatt Jollies to tie it up. And when we resume second period, it'll be Grayson, or pardon me, it'll be Team Brick Alberta going on the power play. A minute and 51 remaining. Honestly, they've got a pretty good uh, pretty good closing ratio when it comes to shots so far, does Alberta one, one for one, so to speak. Uh, while uh, Toronto's actually controlled the play in the offensive zone a little bit more, they've got five shots in on Bruinsma and just one past him so far so. so both teams coming in with identical records however it is the Toronto Bulldogs one more point currently with 10 the Brick Alberta with nine their lone loss for team Toronto Bulldogs came in overtime and they're looking to leapfrog into first place but it was Challenger, it was Jollies, and it's a 1-1 tie here after one period. To no one's surprise between these two teams, super evenly matched. I think we're gonna see it just back and forth the whole yeah. game. Like, uh, it, and, and just the pattern that we've seen established by teams throughout the tournament so far is uh, if one team gains control for any length of time, even then, if they don't open something up, it stays this close the entire game. We might get one more each in the second 12 minute period. That's the other thing we've got to remember. Periods are quite a bit shorter than we're yep. used to. But uh, you know, it, they could go into too. We just saw the last game go to overtime, a very short overtime, mind you. But um, it's been, it's the parody out here among all the teams, even between first and last. Yes, there's been a couple of blowouts. Yeah, but I mean, the parity has been so good at this tournament. And I, let's go back to the last game that we just saw. Winnipeg trailing 4-2, scores two goals to tie it up, and then OJ in overtime gets them their first win, or Team Manitoba, I should say. Team Manitoba, yeah. yeah. That's okay, I do the same yeah. thing. I called Saskatchewan yeah. Regina, just, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's the way, Connecticut, when you see them play and they got the Rangers sweaters on, you wanna say New York, it, it's, it's awesome to see these teams from all over the place though. Right before puck drop and back on the ice, number 88. How about the minutes he's logging so far in George Zetas? Zetas has been a workhorse, and I think, like I said, you're going to see a lot of the best players, quote unquote, uh, take up some of those minutes through a game with such high, high uh, risk and reward. So a power play here for Team Alberta, five on four with a minute and 38 remaining. One one the score, the second period is now underway. Twisting and turning is Antti Gianni, one assist already in today's game. Back into the corner, up top, walking the line is Morrison. He'll fire a shot, blocked in front. Ooh. That one looked like it stung, as that was Wilichka, Mackenzie Wilichna. Here's Morrison, far side, Evans. Works it back up, top of the circle, drives in, changing positions, looks for a shot, that one off a leg through the slot. Driving back in is Lindbergh. 
Buck possession here for Team Alberta. That's a back defenseman up there. Up top, Ooh. looking for Morrison. Just couldn't get a lot on it. Right back on it is Lindbergh, and he'll fire a shot through the blue paint. Trying to desperately race and get it to the blue line, but couldn't clear. Great play there by Antti Gianni to hold it in. Zetas will find it, though, and he'll just shoot it over above everyone's head. 48 seconds left on the power play. Watching the defenseman pinch up like that and go super deep. Again, that's that high risk, high reward thing that I think we're going to see some of here today. Here's Morrison. He gets knocked down. Back around with Ethan Andre. Inside the corner, Barinov. He's shown some glimpses of brilliance in the first period. 13 for the Toronto Bulldogs. Dano battling in towards a scrum. Give credit here to the two Bulldogs. They'll milk it off a lot of time. 15 seconds, but Barinov and Andre against three. And they'll get a cheer from their support staff. How about that? One, their luck, one last rush here on the power play. For Team Alberta into the corner. They'll get watched and knocked up along the boards. Long go. Tied up into the corner. Two now bricks. Another great work here by the Bulldogs. Just hemming it along the board, and they've done it. They've killed off the power play. And that's a whistle like blown down. Two thirds of a power play. Six feet inside the, uh, when you're short handed, six feet inside the other team's blue line as well. Yeah, Ethan Andre. And, uh, and Andrew Barinov, the two on just underneath the broadcast booth here against three or four Team Brick Alberta for, what, about 25 seconds against the wall. It, you know what? That just shows the effort that these kids are willing to put in to uh, get to that first place spot. So still 1-1, under 10 minutes remaining here in the second period as a battle racing for the puck. That's Castangue around the net, scooped up. Butterwick, he gets... Taken down, no penalty on the call. Up top towards the defenseman and Bodker down the wall. Will be driven back into the corner. Butterwick, nifty little move, but then caught an edge. Trying to play it back up to the point. It's now towards the wall in Butterwick. Looking to filter it through, couldn't. And back out comes Longo. Here's the Toronto Bulldogs with three entering the zone. Longo looking for the trailer. It's Kopech, third man in, a shot. Stopped by the blocker of Bruinsma. Great play developing there. And the eyes of the Toronto Bulldogs to find Kopech there. There's Dimitropoulos back around the net. In towards the corner. Blazovic looking to get it out. Kopech working though. And now Butterwick will find it off the glass. Dimitropoulos will send it in. Toronto going to try to get a partial line change on. That'll allow Bodker to pick it up. We know he can skate as he fires along. Rink wide pass, blue line to blue line. Bounced over the stick, though, of Jollies. He's got the game tying goal in the first period. Back the other way for Wang. The defenseman jumping in towards the front of the net. Couldn't get a shot off as he had his stick lifted by the... Blaz by the defenseman, pardon me, in Blazovic of Team Alberta. Butterwick at center. Great back check as Andre again showing the work ethic. Now firing a shot punched away by Bruinsma. Razvik back around the net. Bodker looking to filter that one towards the blue line. Jumped in on by Zetas. Around the boards. Andre shovels it out in front. A loose puck in Burinov. Stopped by Bruinsma. Back comes Antti Gianni. He'll slide it up. Jollies will whistle it in. And once again, it's the work by Ethan Andre down low that sets up the play for Barinov in front. Hutchinson across Barinov. He's got a lane. He's going to walk in, slap shot, and that one blocked up. But rolls on top of the net of Bruinsma, and he'll cover it for a whistle. 1 1 the score, 7 50 left in the second period. Toronto Bulldogs have taken a little bit of control here in the last little while. Lots of pressure coming in. Bruinsma is standing tall, though, for Team Brick Alberta. Stopping everything coming his way and steering it out of danger. I think he's paid a lot of attention to the angle of the puck when he makes that first save. Walinska on the draw there for the Bulldogs. Will win it back and now Alberta right back on it. Shut it. Around the net. Zetas will hold it in. All the way to the point. Here's Wu. Wu. Long shot. That one missed the net, bounced off the back wall though, unable to get it back out in front where the Bulldogs, they'll play it back up top. Here's Zetas, walks the line. That one stopped by Bruinsma. And looking at it here, the Team Alberta trying to break it out of their own zone. Evans will send it back in around the net. Zetas back behind. 
His own net as the aggressive forecheck here comes for Alberta. Two in, looking to hold that puck in, and they come out with possession. Off the boards to the point. Morrison didn't have a lane towards the net. Now a chance at the top of the zone. Down low. This great puck movement here by Team Alberta. D to D, here's Morrison. Morrison will fire, that one blocked in front by Zetas. Then he gets picked off. And back out in front, chance for Alberta. And fanning on the shot up towards the line, O'Gorman. Now Morrison looks for a lane, slap shot off. His teammates skate back behind the net. Morrison at the blue line, walks it, shoots, seen, eye through traffic. And a rebound for Castongue, wrap around chance. And the support staff for Alberta thought that one bounced off the goalie and went in. Alberta, how about the pressure here? Morrison, top of the circle, working it back the other way is Deneau to Morrison. Back for Deneau, he'll let one ride. That one blocked in front by Zetas. The Bulldogs got to be spent. They're going to send it all the way down the ice, but that's going to be icing against Toronto. Great shift there for Team Alberta. Holy was it ever. I just said last break in play that it was Toronto controlling and now Alberta saw, you know, we can't let that happen. And Morrison was the entire quarterback of that entire play, just shot after shot, saw the ice so well. They moved the puck very, very well that go around. Still only one shot on net. Here's Antti Gianni as you got to give credit to Toronto for blocking a lot of those opportunities that were towards the net of Lincoln Heath. Yeah, Toronto's happy to sacrifice. I've seen that out of these kids too. They just have no problem getting in front of these pucks. And you saw a shot earlier that hit one of the Bulldogs. It stung. He doesn't care. They're back out there doing it again. That was Mackenzie Wilich. Who blocked that shot that you were mentioning. 5.52 left in the second period. It's a 1-1 score. We had a stoppage of play there with Souvenir for fans. I think it went out of play. Is everyone all right? Uh, that's what I'm wondering. I think maybe somebody got hit by a puck up there. There's great turnout by everyone involved as the rink is packed. You can't find a spot along the glass, but as you mentioned, it is low glass, so you got to keep your head on a swivel. Yeah, the patrons of the mall are protected by netting. The people inside those nets, not. And we get used to the nets at all the hockey games we go to now. Kopech will send it back in. He's been a strong player for the Bulldogs. Turn back around by Bodker, though. All the way to the blue line. Now sent out. There's Jollies. Whips it back in. Around the net, Wang. He'll shovel it D to D. Trying to break it back up ice. Here comes Kopech. Kopech pushed against by Deneau. Deneau will win that battle as the puck steers free. In towards the near side. This one crept out of the zone, forcing Toronto to check up. They do. And the Bulldogs back up to center. It's as far as they get. It's Challenger will send it right back in around the net of Bruinsma. Nice touch pass leading Deneau outside the zone. Deneau now trying to shovel one through the trailer. High man in. It's Evans. He'll take a look. Tipped in front. They score. Artello forestall. Gets the brick, their first lead of the game. It's two to one. That was a great heads up play by Evans as he took that trailer drop pass. Sends it across and Forstall, make no mistake, we're going up by a goal, Team Alberta. 4.46 left in the second. It is their first lead of the game. And you mentioned it as Forstall, all he had to do was just put his stick on the ice and Evans found it right off the stick. Top blocker corner and for Forstall, that's his fourth goal of the tournament already. Honestly, I've seen that from Alberta. Their passing is crisp, clean, and very, very good. And you saw it when they had all that pressure in the other end uh, just a few minutes ago. Back down the right wing wall is Toronto trying to get it. Here's Barinov. Barinov looking towards the boards. Barinov now, his shot fanned on it, collides with a brick defender. It'll force the play back up towards the wall. Working after it's Ethan Andre. On it, Barinov, Kostangwe will send it back down. Shot coming from Andre, that one just whistled a little bit wide. Up top is Dimitropoulos, he'll send it around for Toronto. Trying to race after it is Ethan Andre. Bit of a body check there, wasn't called as Andre put the shoulder into his man back behind the net. A chance at the side, banging away at it is Toronto. The referee's arms up and everyone's into the pile in front of Bruins, but not sure who's gonna get pulled. But
but the referee's arm was up as that loose puck right on top of the blue paint. Well, and one thing we've seen here, despite the fact they're young and there's no actual body contact to be had, um, they're still protecting their goalies just like oh, any yeah. other hockey player will. Four so, minutes. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, so you'll see the odd pushing and shoving. That's the first dog pile I've seen uh, thus far, but it's uh, Kane Lindbergh that's heading off. Well, there's 12 people on the ice, <laughs> and I think 10 people were in the scrum. It um, seems that. Of course, the goaltender could have been 11. <laughs> And one defenseman was it. You had everyone in front of Bruinsma as the penalty is going to be going to Team Alberta. So on the power play now for the first time in the game is the Toronto Bulldogs. A chance to tie it up at 2-2. On the wall. Back down Longo. Trying to race in after it was Hine. Played along the boards. Up top for Wu. Takes a peek. Doesn't like the lane. Or bounce off the back wall. Smart play by Wu there as he didn't have anything towards the front of the net. Trying to get a redirection off the boards. All the way up top, Wang, down towards the wall. Wolitschka, back down low, in front, shoots, stopped by Bruins, but checks behind him, but it's on top of the pad. Big save by the Alberta goaltender and Baron Bruinsma. Huge, and it, you, you can see Toronto set it up really well, which is something Alberta wasn't able to do on their power play, so Toronto wasted no time in getting the setup. You mentioned the smart play. Do you try to use the end boards and get a funny bounce? Wu and Wang on the back end doing very, very well quarterbacking this power play. Up front, you got Matthew Hine, Mackenzie Wolitschka. On the far side there is Tyler Longo. As you mentioned it, Wu and Wang on the point. Wang with a wrist shot, pad save. Great right pad kick out by Bruinsma. He's been sharp today. All the way back up, Wu walks the line. A block in front. That one hit Shuttick. Wang. Trying to send it back down the boards, and it's backhanded all the way down the ice. Nice right pad saved by Bruinsma. One minute now left on the power play. Around the net is Jack Wu. Almost turned it over, but good back check by Hine. He'll feed Wolitschka. Wolitschka down the boards. Up top for Wu. Back for Wolitschka. Set up now are the Bulldogs. Wolitschka in, down low. There's Longo. Twists and turns, trying to shake off the defenseman and Morrison. Back for Wu. Here's Longo. Walks off the wall. A wrist shot blocked by Morrison. And the Brick trying to desperately get it out. And they will as this one led back out inside Bulldog territory. 30 seconds to work with here in the power play. Wang twists back inside his own zone. As Jasper Wang back up towards center ice. Evans had the assist on the last goal. Trying to pick it up. Nearly offside. They stay onside. In front is Evans. Unable to connect. He was looking for Madden to know. Back come the Bulldogs. Challenger down the right wing. As the lone goal for the Bulldogs. Now some pressure coming in towards the corner wall. Two seconds up on the power play. Zetas along towards the half wall. Trying to get it towards Cohen Hutchinson. Back for Zetas. Out of the box. Nice pass across. Shoots. That one up and over the net. Has just missing wide was Toronto. Up top. Another penalty now coming up against Alberta. As Toronto's going to go right back onto the power play. Zetas from his skate to his stick will throw it into an open corner. That'll be it. And now touching it is Alberta. So right back onto the power play. And two big saves by Bruinsma on the initial one. Save after save. Yeah, and honestly, just a heads up play by him to kick it to the outside. He needs his defense to be able to get on those. Alberta was able to uh, sweep him out a couple of times. But honestly, you can't let Toronto have that length of time and that many shots on your goaltender, and now back-to-back -back power plays, you're really going to see uh, see the moxie of these young Alberta boys. So Team Toronto starting the first power play with the combo of Longo, Hyde, and Wolitschka. Now you're going to see Challenger, Kopech, unable to see who's on the far side. Cohen Hutchinson's on the right wing, and on the point is Zetas and Wang. You got Justin Castange in the box for, I believe it was hooking was, was the call. So the second power play of the game for the Toronto Bulldogs. Back up, Wang will lift it up in towards the corner. Steered off the puck was Hutchinson. All the way around, racing after it, Zetas. Zetas at the blue line, nice move, shakes free. Now the pass down the wing, back door shot, score! No goal! As this one hit the inside of the post. What a pass. Wow. All the way back up top, Zetas, his wrist shot redirected. 
I'm not sure what prevented that puck from going in. Is on the far side, a one-timer by Cohen Hutchinson. Something prevented it. Back around, wraparound chance as Kopech got the pad down was Bruins, but backhand shot by Challenger. That one shoveled wide. And now sent all the way down the ice. Did you get a better look at it than I did? I honestly, <laughs> that's not the exact same thing. I want a replay on that to see what it was. But honestly, you're looking at Toronto using their size on this power play in a big way. 48 seconds left here in the second period. Andre going to drive down the left wing. Ethan Andre stops up, protecting it well. Shovels off to no. Andre now plays it up top for Zetas. He's been on the whole power play so far along the boards. Andre down low is Burinov. Burinov will work it back up towards the half wall. Sends it down for Andre. 28 seconds left. Andre out in front to loose puck and just set wide was Longo. Longo, another look, he'll go up top for Wang, has Zetas, goes back down for Longo, off the boards, down low, Barinov trying to shovel it in, pardon me, that was Andre, Andre with it, up top for Wang, wrist shot off a shin pad, all the way up and into the air, into the corner, scooped up and protected by Barinov, trying to get a final period, buzzer beater here, three seconds left, and unable to find the shot towards the net. So it is Team Brick Alberta with 15 minutes remaining, a two to one lead. Toronto, 21 seconds left on the power play when we come back for the final period. What a flurry we saw there just on that power play. It was just Toronto controlling everything. And you can see it in the shots on goal, 14 so far. They still got 21 seconds yet uh, when we come back for that little bit longer third period after an actual rest and the chance to look at the X's and O's down in the dressing room. Well, and a tough one for Lincoln Heath. If you look at the scoreboard, two shots on goal, two against, but you're not stopping the goal uh, by forestall. A perfect redirection, no chance for the goaltender. And the first one, just a scrum in front, was banged in. So you can't really blame Lincoln Heath on either of the goals, but you're right, 14-2, to two, the shots on goal favoring Toronto. You know what? That doesn't mean Toronto hasn't had shot, or Alberta hasn't no, had shot at attempts. Not at all. Toronto's blocking a lot. Uh, at the same time, they're sending it towards the net. Sometimes it's just falling down in front and, and not counting as that shot on goal. And Alberta obviously is taking advantage of the chances when they have them. So Toronto with the win would leapfrog all the way into first place. Team Alberta trying to get themselves into the bye and we got 15 minutes left to determine it. Once we get a flood, we'll see how it goes once things flip around and uh, teams get back to their original sites. Two periods down, one to go. As it's a 2-1 lead for Team Brick Alberta here on ASTV. Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment
Sons Hotel, we have you and your family's comfort in mind. Relax in one of our 16 suites featuring king or queen size beds and 36 inch TVs. Suites also include a mini fridge and other kitchen appliances to make your stay as comfortable as possible. During your stay in Pilot Mound, visit Wiser's Restaurant, our attached family-friendly restaurant and bar. It is the perfect location to host group meals, dine with the family, or unwind after a hockey game. Come in and meet our friendly staff, offering daily specials on food and drinks, wing night Wednesdays, buffet Fridays, and multiple TVs to watch the game. Wiser's is the place to be. Collins Hotel and Wiser's Restaurant and Bar, located across the street from Black... <laughs>
Welcome back inside West Edmonton Mall. Rory McGoran alongside Darcy Young as we have two periods gone, one period to go, and it's a 2-1 score for Brick Alberta. It's been such an exciting game. Honestly, Rory, back and forth. We've seen Alberta control for, for portions. We've seen Toronto control for portions. Toronto right at the end of that second period in a big way with the back-to-back -back power plays. Obviously, lots of shots, but Bruinsma has stood tall so far. Toronto's going to have 21 seconds when they come back out into the third period on the power play, but how about the chance from Challenger, I believe it was, at the side of the net that we thought was in, and I'm not sure what stopped it. I think well, we're going to get another look right here. Honestly, we're all questioning whether it was in or not. <laughs> it was a great play by Zetas here to open up a lane. Watch this. Nice moves. Oh, okay. Can we run that back, Cody, and just pause it right as the puck kind of enters? Sorry, man. Our producer, Cody, we're going to put him through his paces yeah. right now because this is the coach came over and asked, hey, was that in? I think and inside of the post. It looked, yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. Like it, it hit the, the, the stretched part of the net and just bounced right back out. Oh, I'd say. Can you back it up like half a second there, Code? What a chance. I wish we had an overhead camera on that one. That would be. I think the ref's got it right. I think no goal. Off the iron, bounced right out, but a, a great chance on the power play. And we've really seen that power play kind of, they've only had two opportunities. We mentioned 21 seconds. First one took a little bit while to get going, but that second one, they were in the zone for pretty much all that minute and 40. They were, and Alberta, you can tell, was kind of back on their heels a little bit. So they'll be wanting to get that out of the zone as soon as humanly possible this go around. Even with only 21 seconds left, three more shots coming in at your goaltender. Kind of a scary thing. And you mentioned, how about Bruinsma back there? Because he's faced 14 shots and only allowed one goal. He has been phenomenal. And honestly, you watch uh, the way he's playing, his positioning, his angles of the first save have been exactly what Team Brick Alberta needs. The problem that I, as I mentioned earlier, is now the defenseman got to sweep it out of the zone as opposed to letting Toronto get it back and set up once again and start firing. And no, no question about it, when they come back on the power play, expect to see big number 88 for the Toronto Bulldogs on the blue line. How good has Zetas been? He has been phenomenal and a workhorse. He's been out there. I feel yeah. like he's been out there all 24 minutes so far. And then you mentioned on your highlight so far of the night in today's game as we go back to a replay. I think we got a little bit of a goal pack here. First one scored by Challenger. That's the chance that off the post, the no goal on the power yeah, play. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's off the inside of the post yeah. and bounced right back out. A great chance there for Challenger on the far side on the power play. He already had one tonight, almost had two. He opened the scoring for the Toronto Bulldogs and then back-to-back -back goal. But how about the vi the vision by Evans to find Forstall in front and tip that one up above? Again, Heath. Evans Evans took that pass in the slot. He It was on his stick for all of half a second. Straight over Forstall, like you mentioned, just had to have a stick on the ice. Bang. Johnny on the spot. Well, one point separates these two teams in the standings, and one goal separates them in the game. It's 2-1 to one with 15 minutes remaining. I mean, let's see what happens. This is going to be an excellent third period. As teams now come back out onto the ice, it is Bruinsma down to our broadcast right, and he has stopped 13 of 14. Out on the other side is Lincoln Heath. We expect for the Toronto Bulldogs, only two shots faced. He has allowed two goals. We mentioned it prior to the start of the third period that you can't really blame Heath for any of the goals. It was just great opportunistic moments by Alberta. And then you also mentioned that don't look at the shot total for Alberta because they maybe have about 20 shot attempts, just a lot blocked by the Bulldogs. Exactly, and I think that you're gonna still see that because Toronto obviously wants to keep their goaltender uh, as clear as possible. It'll be great as uh, we're just waiting for Toronto to get back out here. They're a little slow coming up from the dressing rooms, but you, they get uh, a couple of seconds to get hyped by the announcer, Marty. Well, I want, I want to give a, a shout out to one of the Toronto players here because he's not wearing the number that he's prescribed in the program. And also the <laughs> name bar says CCM Sports on it. So there must have been a mishap with a jersey and that's Royce Carlton. So Royce Carlton not wearing 71, he's wearing 18. So my apologies not knowing who that was until we did a little fact checking. It's not the first time it's <laughs> happened, and it won't be the last at this tournament, I'm sure. Yeah, CCHA Sports. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't think that's his last name. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we had, uh, I think it was Team Minnesota 
uh, young Kampa. We had two of his jerseys out in one of the games yesterday, and it was not until the next time I saw them and, and uh, the other defenseman was wearing his proper jersey that we were able to uh, identify who they actually were. Well, teams are set. The Bulldogs to the left, the Brick to the right. A bye on the line into the playoffs tomorrow and a one-goal game. This puck is dropped and we're underway in the third period, playing it back towards the blue line. There he is, Zetas across to Wang. Up top, Kopech will work it down the right wing, steered off the puck by Evans. Near side, bouncing off the boards. Wang, great job to hold it in. Can he do it a second time? No, as this one's flipped up over his stick. And that should just about do it to the power play as out comes Castangue. And we're back to five on five. That was Evans again that cleared it out. His vision comes in handy on the penalty kill too. Wang pivots around back into his own zone. Nice move to shake off Chudik. Now Wang picking up speed. The mobile defenseman driving in. Wang gets tripped up. No call. Wanted one. Goes sliding right into the post and back the other way. And an on man rush comes the brick. Chudik across. A chance for Chudik. Jollies with the shot. Now back in front. Blocked. Jollies. He's got the game tying goal for the brick. Before Forstall gave them their first lead. And bounced all the way out for Jollies. That's his second goal of the tournament. As one minute gone here in the third period. Morrison works it back out. How about these moves outside of his own zone by Morrison. Jollies will help him out. Lifting it towards the blue line. Steered away. There's Wu. Finds Barinov. Here goes Barinov down the right wing. Walks by O'Gorman. Barinov spins off O'Gorman. Back chance now on it. Marinov into the corner. O'Gorman's there at the line. Dimitropoulos. There's a collision. Knocks down a body in Antigiani. Andre, he's been strong tonight. Finds Wu at the point. Wu walks into one. A long shot. This one blocked, but then flutters back close to the side of the net. In front. Rolling buck. Barinov a backhand. Oh. Almost onto the stick there of Hutchison. But just bounced over. Long shot in by Dimitropoulos. In and out of the glove. Of Bruinsma, and now he'll smother it and settle things down in front of his own net. Smart move by Bruinsma after being peppered there. And honestly, uh, Toronto, you just saw <laughs> their forwards closer and closer into the crease, and Bruinsma was, he was feeling a little claustrophobic there, and the chances just kept coming, so good on him to stop it down and, and get a face off. Great chance by Cohen Hutchison as well, but just flooded over his stick as the Brick Alberta will win the face off around the net. Is Bodker playing into the line, held in. No, oh, it's bounced off a body. Another odd man opportunity. Here's Evans. He's with Forstall the pass. Forstall shoots that one off a body of Wu and went around the nets. Wu walks out the two four checkers, finds his man. Now it's let up ice. Trying to break it in is Hungaro. Throws it towards the net, bounces off the back wall. Here's Hein. Hein in front. Chance for Angaro and a stop by Bruins. Whoa. The second opportunity pad save. Bruins was Team Alberta's fans cheer on their goaltender who's now made 17 saves. Back for Wu. Around. Great. Way to protect the puck and drive down the right side. Almost lost it onto Deneau. There's this one now scooped back up. Wolitschka. Wolitschka in towards the high slot. One on four. Unable to squeeze off a shot. There's back for Jollies. Wyatt Jollies quickly turned over Longo. Longo now in chance shot. Stopped by Bruinsma off the blocker. A big save there off Tyler Longo. Wang will hold it in. A lot of pressure here from the Bulldogs as Wang sends it all the way down the ice. And this will be icing. And we do have a goaltending change. Just notice it to start the third as Blake Farrell's in net for Team Toronto Bulldogs. It's no longer Lincoln Heath. So Blake Farrell, who comes into this game with a 9-10 save percentage, he's faced 67 shots already, stopped 61 of them, and a 2-1 record. And one so far in the third period. <laughs> and one in the third period. There's another offensive zone faceoff, but it's won by the Alberta. All the way up, Antti Gianni, he can fly, Steve. a chance, loose puck, backhand, scores! Brody, Antti Gianni goes roof, and Team Brick has doubled their lead, it's 3-1. What a move. That was a fantastic pass to spring him out, and that kid has some jets that you saw him turn it on. What a great play around the goaltender we just talked about. Blake Farrell now standing in between the pipes. Gets tested early. Yeah, I had no chance with that move. He tucked that one up and under the bar with authority. And for Antti Gianni, two points tonight. Gives him seven on the tournament. 
He's having a heck of a game and a heck of a tournament. Back in center ice now, three to one for the brick. As driving it around is Zetas. He gets stripped off the puck, bounces over a stick of Wu. Rolls back down around the net. Zetas after it. We'll chip it to his defensive partner in Wu. Up top now, Longo. Longo has Challenger with him, trying to hit it, but a puck just navigates past his stick, and that will allow Castangue to send it back out to center ice. Here's Butterwick. He's got a two on one. Butterwick, wrist shot stopped by the goaltender in Farrell. Another chance as the brick puts the pressure on. Out, loose, into the slot, backhand. As that was Van Wise trying to get it towards the net, unable to. Now Hine will clear it up. Long lifting pass to Hutchison. O'Gorman trying to steer Hutchison off the puck. He's got a man in front, but great defensive play. That was Morrison breaking up the passing play. Another poke check by Morrison. Trying to get some help from Evans. In front of the slot, O'Gorman finds a lane. He'll just take it out himself. The pass a little up and ahead of the reach of Evans. Back down into the corner wall, Zetas, the defenseman watching Evans. Pivots back down low. Now in comes some support. Here's Evans. So Forstall. Wu back into the corner for the Bulldogs. First one on, it's going to be Evans here. Evans now takes a peek. He's got a man in the slot. Elects to go back down low to Forstall. Returns the favor, a give and go, and a right pad save by Farrell. Still pressure, though, from the brick. The host team with a two-goal lead. All the way back out to the blue line, and Hine now. He'll cross center ice, work it down the left wing. Hine in around the net, on it. Back behind is Bodker. Turns it over, though. Hutchison, great play, stepping up into it was Blazvik. As Hutchison now will steer it off the stick of Blazvik, trying to get back in, centering pass all the way to the point. D to D, here's Wang, wrist shot, couldn't get a deflection as it was knocked away by Bodker. Back around the net, Forstall on the right wing, 9.40 left here in the third period as this one's going to be called offside against Toronto. They're going to have to check up. They'll do so also, making a little bit of a partial line change. Thrown into an open corner, first one on its Barinov. Couldn't connect with his winger and Wolitschka. From the point, Dimitropoulos will send it in. Wolitschka. Barinov, Barinov now, he's watched by Chudik. We'll go back down low for Walichka. Out in front, Barinov a chance, stopped by Bruinsma. Another save, give him 18. Back off the boards. Up towards the blue line, out at center ice. Here's Antti Gianni again. Had the highlight reel goal to double the lead. Gets taken down behind the net, play resumes. The Bulldogs fire it onto an open corner, and now it's scooped up. Here's Max Kopech. Kopech around the defenseman. Referee almost got in the way. Kopech flying shot. Stopped by Bruins, but loose puck behind him. Barinov couldn't find it. And it rolls back in towards the corner. Off a of body. Up top, here's Antti Gianni. Crossing center ice. Antti Gianni drops. A chance for the brick. Looking for even more. On it was Huscroft. Bouncing play. Huscroft shot. That one stopped by Farrell. Longo scoops it up. Towards the blue line, racing back for it is O'Gorman. Also on it is Hine for the Bulldogs. And this one's going to be called Ice, in though, just in time. 8-12 remaining, and the Brick with a 3-1 lead here in the final frame. The Bruinsma wall is what we're seeing today, <laughs> I think. Honestly, he has been unbelievable, chance after chance. I mean, Toronto's up to 20 shots on goal. He has been stopping everything coming his way. It's been amazing. Right and that first one came so early, he has just turned it on ever since. Four stalls on the face off against Challenger. Challenger wins it. Wu missed his target. It'll roll back down. Don't think this is going to have enough pricing. No, it's not. As after it's O'Gorman. Great strides to get it away from the back of the net and back to the point, but couldn't clear. Wu, four stall, will clear it back out. No, he didn't. It stayed on the line. Great job by Wu to hold it. Now it's forced out by Evans. Andre will send it right back in. Around the net. Trying to cause some havoc as long go. Andre jumps in down low. 7.38 here left in the third period. As Evans came pretty close to the broadcast booth there with that <laughs> dump in. But heads on a swivel. Z-Tas back the other way. Nice crisp pass finds Longo. Longo. 
toe drag. Gets around the defenseman, but the puck rolled too far, and Bruinsma chipped it into the corner. Another scrum ensued. You got two of each team in there. Andre, Longo, sent away from them. Forstall all the way down the ice. This is going to be icing here against the Brick. Honestly, Toronto, for whatever reason, hasn't been able to get, aside from a little bit uh, a few minutes ago, that sustained pressure that we saw in the first couple of periods. And now that they're down by two, it's when they need it the most. <laughs> Yeah, you got to give credit to the defenseman for Team Brick because their puck movement has been quick and it's been reactive getting that puck out of the zone before Toronto can get set up. Which is exactly what I said they needed to do yep. earlier. It's like they're listening down there. <laughs> Coach can hear you. <laughs> down on the wall is Chudik. Collides with Walichka. Hine. Now Jollies for Team Alberta. We'll find him this one. Bench. Slipped up, up, and into the bench. 6.49 remaining here in the third period. Antignani is out there again, taking up a lot of minutes. Obviously, <laughs> when you're having the kind of game that he is with a goal and an assist and, and just able to uh, create chances and that sort of thing, uh, you're going to keep him out there. He has the insurance marker, does Brody Antignani. Around the net, Bodker. Look at the speed here by Bodker. The defenseman can move as he <laughs> flies it down all the way. Bodker doing all the work. Almost got the puck back as well, but then caught an edge. Far side, up top. Long shot by the defenseman in Chudik. He'll go D to D. Blazovic watched by Hutchison. Will play it back out to the blue line. Sent out to center. Here's Castangue. Turned over, Wang, the defenseman for the Bulldogs, will go D to D to Dimitropoulos. Up ahead, looking for Ongaro. This one, Wang will follow it up around Castangue. Got tripped up and there is gonna be a oh. penalty called here. So the Toronto Bulldogs will get their third power play opportunity trying to get back within one. I think that was uh, Castangue just trying to get the puck, ended up tripping up Wang. and. So yeah, Toronto now, we've seen some sustained stuff out of their power play. And honestly, with that offensive zone draw that they're gonna get, this could be dangerous times for Team Breck Alberta. However, if they keep doing, if, if Bruinsma plays as he's been playing and the defensemen are able to find that open wall and get it out, I think they'll be fine. Well, second penalty of the game for Castangue. As puck possession now, one off the draw, but it oh. slips under the stick of Zetas as he's gotta go back and get it. Across for Wu. Up now, here's Andre. Down the left wing. Gonna look back up top. Wu open, pass off the boards. Right back down for Andre. Kopech and Challenger, the other two on the power play. There's Challenger. Works off the circle. Challenger now working it right towards the net. A backhand shot. Ooh. Challenger just wasn't set at the side of the net. Still gets it back up for Zetas. Down the wall, Challenger walks off, looking to fire a shot, but a great defensive play. Coming back was Madden Deneau to stop that opportunity. Yeah, and this one flying. Uh, Howitzer of a slap shot, caught a stick, it went into the crowd, and you saw about 14 people <laughs> drop to the ground in an instant. <laughs> yeah, welcome to hockey at West Edmonton Mall. You got a duck. Uh, uh, you mentioned we almost got one. I did get one yesterday in the chest. Luckily, it was, it was just a clearing. <laughs> it wasn't too bad at all. But uh, yeah, you got to be heads up, uh, especially in behind those nets. Oh, there's Woo. a close one right there to your chest. <laughs> As O'Gorman on it, D to D, Morrison, and just like that, all the way down the ice. One little opportunity in front where they're trying to cause some havoc. But other than that, you got to give credit to the defenseman again, clearing it immediately. A team Brick Alberta playing very well on the penalty kill and in their own end now. Woo. Great pass across Whoa. onside is Walichka. That one was close. He'll go back up for Wang. Wang now, down around the wall. Here's Walichka, dropping it down for Longo. Longo around the boards, loses it to Forstall. Smack back up to the point. Here's Wu, D to D, Wang, he's got a chance. Wang shoots, Stoss scores! A screen in front and up and over the blocker of Bruinsma as it's Jasper Wang with the goal and the Bulldogs trail now by one, it's 3-2. Wang and Wu have been stalwarts yeah. on defense and honestly, when that pass came across, there was nothing but space. So he moved up into the slot and was happy to take a, a nice wrister there that finally gets past Bruinsma after 
a long time of not being able to solve him. As we got a one goal game now, 4.30 remaining. Here's Barino as this gives a little jump in the step of the Toronto Bulldogs. Wang across to Wu. Wu up for Andre, sending it in. Back around the net, up top for Wu. Wu, swap shot. This one didn't make its way towards the net of Bruinsma. And it'll be corralled by a brick and all the way down the ice. Is this going to be enough for icing? Yes, it is. So the Bulldogs with an offensive zone draw coming up. Four minutes remaining. 22 to 7. As it was Wang scores, the defenseman with his second goal of the tournament. Of course, you mentioned it before, his defensive partner in Jack Wu picking up an assist for his third assist in the tournament. It was Wu and Heine, Heine on the assist on that one. As Heine picks up his third point, Marinov watched by Jollies. Now in comes Chudik. Wang, far side, Hutchison sends it in. 3.44 left here in the game. It's a one-goal game. It's back around the net as Andre. On it, O'Gorman for the brick. Barinov strips him, though up top, Wang, another shot, couldn't get this one through. Barinov right back on it, goes to Zetas at the point, he'll fire, that one blocked us. That one hit Jollies, looks to be stung up, it was right above the knee. He'll stay in the play, pops back to his feet, now gets the puck. And can he slide it up? Yes, he can, as this one sent back out to center. Still hurting. Yeah, that one stings right above the shin pad there, there's not much protection under the pants, over the shin pad, I think that's where exactly where it hit him. As back is Zetas, nice play to get away from two four checkers, and he'll find Challenger. Challenger around, O'Gorman couldn't get any shot off. Back comes Alberto, Castangwe dances around Kopech. Back down the left wing, and then runs it into the wards. Follows it up, though, back around the net. Castangwe, here's Kopech. He'll drive it outside in the defensive zone, in across center, into the attacking zone. Max Kopech shoots, stopped by Bruinsma. Rebound chance, and the Bulldogs are banging at it. Ends up into the corner. Steered away and played out by Van Ways. Zetas after it. No icing on the play. 2.30 left here in the third period. Brick Alberto with a 3-2 lead. Wu into the corner. Zetas up top. Kopech trying to clear. He gets a little help there from Hein. Forstall. Loses it to Zetas, goes D to D, Wu calling for it is Heine. Heine driving in down the right, but just offside, Archerano. Stoppage of play and face off in neutral territory. You're going to see Toronto start to stretch it out like they just tried, and uh, I'm guessing in a couple of seconds we're going to see an empty net there. I've said it before, Rory, here at this tournament. I've said it on the broadcast over and over again. Two-goal lead is the worst lead in hockey. <laughs> Because honestly, you think you're safe and you start backing off a little bit. One goal completely changes it, and you've seen the momentum shift back to Toronto since they scored that one goal. 2.03 remaining here in the third period as the battle ensues into the corner, off the draw. Longo trying to get it out of his own zone. Gets some help. Back is Wolitschka. Down around the net. Goaltender going to try to leave. No, he's not going yet. Coach says to stay in. He, about, he went about halfway towards the boards, and then Coach sent him back. A stick up and under the arm of Longo. No call on it. Goaltender still not pulled, and rightfully so. As back comes Evans. That Ooh. one really close to coming in. Caught the top of the glass. Stayed in play. Longo up for Heine. There, there he goes. goes the goaltender. Pulled net for the Bulldogs. Heine around the boards. Wolitschka going after it. The defenseman takes a collision along the wall. Play resumes. High off the glass to the point for Wu. 118 remaining in a one goal game. Longo twists around into the corner. Playing it up top. Here's Wu. Wrist shot blocked by Chudik. Wu gets it back though. Down the boards. Longo in front and no one's home as no one can get a stick on that one. Edmund, or probably Alberta back the other way. Open net opportunity and couldn't find it was Jollies. Under a minute remaining. Six on five. The Bulldogs trying to equalize this game at three. Hutchison in towards the high slot. Following it up is Longo. Backhand towards the back door. They score! Jaden Challenger with his second goal of the game. And first place is not out of grabs for the Toronto Bulldogs. 
It's a tie game, 3-3. 42.8 seconds left to go, and Challenger evens it up. And again, another great pass. Challenger just had to have his stick there and was able to uh, just redirect it in past Bruinsma. Tyler Longo with that backhand backdoor pass through about three sticks too, a great feed. And you mentioned a challenger, second goal of the game. As he's now got three goals in this tournament to go along with two assists, but none bigger than that. As we got a tie game with 42 seconds remaining and a timeout taken here by Team Alberta. Can't say I'm surprised, no. I mean, now that, again, that two goal lead has evaporated, you gotta get these guys back focused again, because honestly, uh, the ability to go back and capitalize and take that lead back is still there. I still can't get over the entire flyby around half the arena when they score a goal, I love it. Because the fans are able to reach their hands down, I'm sure the kids love it. It's it's awesome yeah. to watch. It's awesome that everybody can be here to take part of it, that we can all be together after a couple of years yep. of craziness, and here we are. Well, I mean, it seems like a long time ago, but it was actually only two tournaments ago, 2018. You look at the banners hanging here, Toronto Bulldogs, they were champions. Of course, the last time the tournament was played, it was a team out of Connecticut winning, but back-to-back -back champions for the Bulldogs in 2017, 2018, and they're one goal away from claiming first place in the round robin. Yeah, they've got a heck of a tradition there uh, with the Bulldogs, and, and you can see it in, in the, the, the crowd that comes out, the noisemakers they bring, the fact that they have a mascot here as well. So 38 seconds. we got a tie game. Puck straddled along the blue line. Pope now back into the Bulldogs' end. On it is Wang. Picks his head up, takes a look, goes across to Wu. These two have been spectacular. Up ahead, Andre will lead it. Challenger, right back on the ice after scoring the game tying goal. Challenger moving back around the net, trying to jam it in was Hutchison. Bad save, big one for Bruinsma. 13 seconds left. Alberta gets it out to center ice. Bouncing play, kicked into the zone by Evans. Off the near side boards, Hutchison stripped by Deneau. Five seconds left, across to Morrison. Up top now, Antigiani. Evans sends it in, and the final seconds will roll off the board. So for the second straight game here at the Brick Invitational, we're getting overtime hockey. You know what? Again, we talked about it back at the start of the game, how evenly matched these two teams are. Honestly, what's more Canadian on Canada Day than watching some kids evenly matched, tied up, <laughs> go into overtime here at a tournament in a mall in Edmonton. This is awesome. <laughs> well, let's just break it down now what can happen because an overtime win is now only two points. Yep. Regulation is three. So if the Toronto Bulldogs win, they'll actually be tied with Team Minnesota with 12 points now. Of course, it would go then into head-to-head -head and goal Differential, four. Differential, all that, yeah. Find out the tiebreaker. If Team Alberta can pick up the victory, they'll be in 11th place and they'll be a three-way tie for second place. Wow. So, <laughs> And of course, the top six advance. On yes. to the next one. So, Both yeah. Both these teams safe regardless. Yep. But still, it comes down to bragging rights now. And it's it's obviously, we talk about the sportsmanship, the competition. You still want to come out on top one way or the other. They're going to make it either way. But uh, honestly, you still want to come out with that W. So we're going to get three on three overtime for two minutes. The last one sure didn't last very long. Nope. OJ for Team Manitoba. As you got the dancing section there for the Bulldogs. It's two minutes on the clock, three on three. And then they'll do another two minutes of two on two. <laughs> a unique format, I do like it though. The two on two thing, yeah. I haven't seen that. Like that's a lot of ice. <laughs> so much. You know, um, the three on three I've always liked, uh, even uh, at senior levels of hockey. Three on three is cool to watch because it's it's more like the hockey you used to play on your backyard rink at home. Well, overtime is upon us. 3-3 the score. As back and possession now the Bulldogs. Working it out is Andre. It's Challenger, Andre, and Wang. For the Bulldogs, it's Morrison, O'Gorman, and Antignani. Up for Challenger. Rich shot looking glove side. That one just whistled wide. Here's a chance now, breaking it back is Antignani. He'll go across to Morrison, stripped of the puck by Wang, but then taken back by Antignani. Walks oh. around, a two on O for Alberta. Shoot stop by Farrell. Rebound, wrap around.
bomb shacks and Tignani in front for Morrison and couldn't get the connection. What a save by Blake Farrell. Back into the corner, around the boards, challenger after it. Minute 17 left here in three on three. There's Andre across to Wang. Andre's gonna go change. So this is the partner and challenger. Wang, the lone bulldog left on the ice, slips and falls into the corner. This could be a three on two coming back the other way as driving it in is Morrison. Morrison down the left. He's got in front. Kastongwe stopped by Farrell. Oh. Rebound just wide as the brick with two glorious opportunities to send the hometown crowd home happy is back towards the near side. Hutchinson. Hutchinson. He's trying to get a step on Lindbergh. Unable to walk that one in as he lost it along the blue line. Now Castangue back into the corner. He'll follow up his own play. Castangue out of his own zone. Gets around Longo. Here's Castangue. Poke check. Longo trying to clear the trailers. Evans fires blocked. Evans now top of the circle. 15 seconds left. He'll walk it all the way back out, but that's gonna have to get Kastongwe, who's at the end of his shift, and now he does. Checked up, Evans picks up some speed. Sharp angle shot, shot it wide. Five seconds left, taking it all the way out. Here's Lindbergh, and that's gonna do it for three on three, so you're gonna get a chance to get a glimpse of it. Hua. Two on two <laughs> is coming up next. What a couple of chances Alberta had there to end it. Unbelievable that he uh, Morrison just missed that outside post. So now we're going to see two on two. Blake Farrell with two giant saves, one on a two on oh, and then one on a two on one. You know what? I mean, you look to your goaltenders in times like this, and we've seen Bruins was stepping up the entire game. Farrell did it here in the overtime period. I am i don't know how this two on two is going to work out. It's interesting that that one less guy, what do we got up front? I think we're gonna get. I think we're gonna get the saves by Farrell coming up here. Oh, yeah. As he got Challenger, his shot wide, and then it was all brick going back the other way. Almost and lost it there. Antignani, and that opened up everything. Great play. Big stop there. As now well. out front, chance there, couldn't get it. All right, back to it. So two on two. You got Antignani and Morrison for the brick. You got Copa and Wang, and Kopech will pick it up. Kopech in towards the slot. Morrison, great job to knock him off the puck. Morrison slides down. Kopech stays on his feet, working it out in front. Kopech trying to lift it up above the shoulder. Loose Ooh. puck, and Kopech couldn't find it. Two on two. Electric, as you can feel it in the building, too. Morrison now drives wide around. Kopech trying to get back in stride. Morrison, he's got Antignani on the far side. Morrison shoots, scores! Jevin Morrison, the defenseman, drives down the left and have lifted the home team to victory. 4-3 for Team Brick, Alberta. Unbelievable. It was, it was so wide open, you knew that a little bit of speed was going to be the one that helped them get there. The host team finishes now in a tie for second place as they go four and one, looking for their first championship since 2009. And depending on tiebreaker rules or not, we'll see if they get that by, but how about the goal there by Jevin Morrison? Unbelievable, honestly, and, and what effort by both of these teams to go into the third, fourth, and fifth periods uh, and just a phenomenal job by Morrison, a defenseman, yeah. mind you, to turn on the Jets and uh, get around and, and able to uh, push Alberta up into that tie for second. Well, the coach, Umberto, uh, Umberto Fiorillo, of the team Alberta, you think two on two, you don't obviously get a chance to play that, but are you thinking two forwards in that situation? He elects to put on Morrison, a defenseman, of course, uh, up with the forward, and uh, it paid off. I, yeah, I, think, I think you pick your fastest defenseman and put yeah. him out there, and I think that's exactly what he did, and that's how it paid off. Well, it's his first goal of the tournament for Morrison and a 4-3 win for Team Brick Alberta. We're going to present some three stars. i got to go down, and I will uh, do some interviews with them here as well, so I leave you to it, Rory. <laughs> All right, Darcy is an electric game. you got to give credit for Team Alberta as well for sticking to it, leading this game 3-1. to one.
And then having Toronto storm back, tie the game, went to overtime, three on three, solved nothing, two on two, which was utterly entertaining, awesome to watch. And that one forced Jevin Morrison, first goal of the tournament for Team Brick. As we take a look now into your standings, you're gonna get a single point for the Toronto Bulldogs. So that will be 11 points for the Bulldogs. Team Brick Alberta is also going to get two points. So you have a four-way tie for second place. And we'll try to navigate through all the tiebreakers on who beat who and goals for and everything that uh, falls under that criteria. But right now it's Team Minnesota in first with 12 points. Their 4-1 record. And you got the Western Selects, Connecticut Junior Rangers, Toronto Bulldogs, and Team Brick Alberta all tied now with 11 points. It's final game for those two teams. You're gonna have BC Junior Canucks with eight points holding on to that sixth and final playoff spot. However, Toronto Pro Hockey gonna try to change that. They play later tonight. And if Toronto Pro Hockey can pick up a point or two, they will leapfrog BC and into that final spot as we await Tarsi down with our three stars of the game. You gotta think Bruinsma's got to be in there. Morrison, of course, the overtime hero. Challenger for the Bulldogs had a couple goals. A lot where you can do with this. Jesper Wang, Jack Wu were both fantastic for the Bulldogs. Longo, Andre. Interesting to see who the three picks are going to be. And then on the other side for the hometown team, Brody Antignani with a goal and an assist. He had work from Jet Evans, of course. Wyatt Jollies with a goal. So it is a... Uh, going to be hard to find just three in this spectacular game. Four to three. As we'll get the three stars now. So third star is going to Jevin Morrison. And he had the overtime winner, the hero, with his first goal of the tournament. Third point overall. And the second star will be Challenger. Two goals in the game, possibly picked up an assist, almost had the hat trick on that power play replay we showed you that hit the inside of the post. And no one's surprised here. It's Baron Bruinsma with the first star as he faced 25 shots and stopped 22 of them. So Baron Bruinsma, your first star. Jaden Challenger, your second star. And Jevin Morrison, your third star, rounds out the game tonight as we await Tarsi, he'll be joined by a member of those three stars. But a wild log jam in your standings if you've been paying attention to the Brick Invitational. Four teams tied for second place with 11 points each. As we're going to have next up the Boston Junior Bruins against the Detroit Junior Red Wings coming up. Both those teams two and two followed by the final game tonight. Toronto Pro Hockey, as we mentioned, seven points trying to jump back in and Team Pennsylvania down to ice level. Now, All right, you guys, thank you so much. What a game here. We got our third star, the game hero. Jevin Morrison, take me through that goal, my friend. Well, it was uh, very, very like awesome. It was just the thrill of when it went in. It was just uh, nothing better than that. So he can't, yeah, it's you can't beat it, so. So Rory and I were talking on the play-by-play -play cap. Go with a defenseman and a forward. Are you the fastest defenseman on the team? Is that why he chose you? Uh, no, I think I don't. I can't take credit for the goal. I mean, my teammates helped me out the whole way, and uh, I couldn't have done it without them. Obviously, thanks so much. Congratulations on the win today. Now we're going to bring in our first star. Saw the Bruinsma wall out there today. You made, you stopped pretty much everything that came your way today. Tell me about your game. Uh, I thought I played a good game. I got lots of shots, lots of saves. Um, and my team helped me through the way. It was an awesome game. The first goal, obviously, kind of set you back a little bit. But after that, it really seemed like you changed your mindset and things changed for you. You stopped everything that came your way. Yeah, I knew. Um, put that behind me. Keep on going. Uh, my team has the skill. We have the skill to beat this team. I watched you a lot in terms of when you make that first save. You like to angle that puck off to the corner. Who's taught you that? Um, my goalie coach, Ty Rimmer. And shout out to them. Ty Rimmer, Tyler Love, and um, 
Jamie, my, goal, my goalie coaches. So how are you feeling after all that? Oh, it's awesome. It's a relief. We won the game in overtime. It's awesome. Right on. Congratulations on the win today. And it seems like our second start the dressing room. So that's it for this game. Five to three, or four to three, the final score. Team Brick Alberta walking away with the victory.